Hello, this is Janila, the person behind Crafty Crochet Castle. And in this video, I'll show you the pattern to crochet the candy drawstring coin purse. These coin purses are shaped like a candy and they are closed in one end and has a drawstring opening on the other end. So I have three sizes for these coin purses. Here is the quarter holder and this is size small. These purses are perfect for holding one quarters. And these would come in handy when you would go on shopping trips where you'd need a quarter to unlock the shopping cart. You can attach a key ring to this and attach it to your car keys as well. And here I have the medium size coin purse. This is slightly bigger and it holds all your changes. And if you would want a bigger coin purse, I have a big size as well. These can hold a lot of change and some cash as well. In this video, I'm going to show you how to crochet the small candy drawstring coin purse. Written instructions for the medium and big size is available in my Ravelry and Etsy store. I hope you will crochet this along with me. The small drawstring coin purse measures about three inches long and the medium one measures about four and a half inches long and the big one is about six inches long. Gauge is a critical factor for this project to make sure our finished pieces are of similar size. So I have a little gauge swatch here. This measures about 2 inches by 2 inches and the pattern for this cord swatch is 7 half double crochet across 4 rows. If you crochet a little bit tighter or looser than me, you would require a different hook size. So make sure to choose your hook according to your cord swatch. For this project, I'm using 100% cotton worsted weight yarn. This is from the brand I Love This Cotton. I'm using two shades of blue here along with 4.5 mm crochet hook. Please refer to the gauge and choose your crochet hook size accordingly. I'm also using scissors, yarn needle, stitch markers. If you would like to attach eyes to the project, you can do so. I'm using some black plastic eyes like this and I'm using a hot glue to attach it to the project. And for the mouth, I'm using a black embroidery thread and needle. The other optional material is a keyring if you would like to finish it as a keychain. The details of these materials are in the description box below. Now let us start working on the pattern. First, we'll be crocheting the candy portion. So I'm taking my light blue yarn here. For round one, we'll do a magic circle followed by five single crochet inside the ring. To do a magic circle, I'm going to hold my yarn like this and I will wrap it around my two fingers and cross it over at the point where both the yarn meets. Next, I will pinch here, carefully take this little loop out and I will insert my hook inside this little loop, yarn over and bring a little loop. This is from the skein end. Now I will hold everything in place, making sure the loop on the hook is of the correct tension. That is, it's not too loose or not too tight. And then I will yarn over and bring a loop. So there we have made our magic circle. We'll be working on these two strands of yarn over here. If you prefer not to work with the magic circle, you can do chain two and work your round one stitches. That is five single crochet in the second chain from the hook. Now let me show you how to do a single crochet. To do a single crochet, I'll insert my hook inside the magic circle, yarn over and bring up a loop. Now I have two loops on the hook. I'll yarn over and pull through both the loops. This is one single crochet. I'll do four more single crochets here so that we have a total of five single crochets for round one. So once when we have done a total of five single crochet, you can always hold your piece like this and count the number of V's that you see over here. One V is one stitch. So once when we do that, you can hold the stitches with your one hand and grab the tail in the other and you can pull the tail. See how the opening is getting closed when we pull the tail? Make sure to pull it tight. So there we have completed round one. For this pattern, we'll be crocheting in rounds and I'm not going to join with a slip stitch at the end of each round unless I mention it. So now let's get started working on round two. Before that, if you would like to mark the last stitch with a stitch marker, you can do so. 
now for round two i will do two single crochet in every stitch around so in the very first stitch that we made here i will do two single crochet in the same stitch and i will work two single crochet in the remaining four stitches over here round two will have a total of 10 single crochet when you're at the last stitch over here you can remove your stitch marker crochet the stitches for that stitch here it's two single crochet And once when we complete the last stitch for the round, we can put the stitch marker back in the last stitch. If you do not have a stitch marker, you can use another color yarn to mark the last stitch of the round. Using a stitch marker helps you work on the repeat pattern without counting the total number of stitches. Now for round three, we'll be working on the back loops only. So when we're working on a stitch, we'll insert a hook like this inside the V and we have two loops over here. The loop that is towards you is the front loop and the loop that is away from you is the back loop. So for this entire round, I'll be inserting my hook only in the back loop over here and I'll be working. So the repeat pattern for this round is two single crochet in the next stitch in the back loop only. So I'm working two single crochet here and one single crochet in the next four stitches in the back loop only. So I'm doing one, two, three and four. So by working only on the back loops, we have a little ridge over here. We'll be using these loops later on to crochet the wrapper. So now this is going to be the repeat pattern for the round. The repeat pattern is two single crochet in the back loops only, followed by one single crochet in the next four stitches worked in the back loop only. Now let's work on round four. For round four, we'll be working on both the loops. The repeat pattern for the round is two single crochet in the next stitch. Followed by one single crochet in the next three stitches. I'll be repeating this pattern two more times for the round and round four will have a total of 15 single crochet. For the next two rounds that is rounds five and six i'll be following the same pattern the pattern is one single crochet in every stitch around each round will have a total of 15 single crochet so i will crochet one round like this and when i'm at the last stitch i'll remove the stitch marker crochet the stitch and place the stitch marker back and crochet one more round like this i'll meet you after i complete round six at the end of round six our project looks like this now i'm going to put a pause to the project i'm going to bring the wrong side outside so that we can weave in the magic circle tail to do so i'm going to thread this tail in a yarn needle make sure to pull it tight to secure the magic circle so that it does not open up later now i'm going to secure it with a knot in the wrong side and we can weave it in to weave it in, I'm going to insert the needle through the loops on the wrong side over here. You can go in any manner and you can grab any set of loops over here. You can go in around or up to down in any way that you prefer. And once when you think you have weaved in enough in one direction, you can turn your project. And this time you can weave it in 
and grab a different set of loops. And once when you weaved it enough, you can take the needle out, stretch out the piece so that the project has not lost its shape and we can trim it off over here. Now let's continue working on the project. This would be my round seven. For round seven, the repeat pattern would be a single crochet two together. To do so, I'll insert my hook inside the next stitch, yarn over and bring up a loop. Instead of finishing this single crochet, I'll insert my hook inside the next stitch, yarn over and bring up a loop. So now we have a total of three loops on the hook, worked on two stitches on the bottom. Now I'll yarn over and pull through all three loops at once. So this is a single crochet two together or a single crochet decrease. We have taken up two stitches from the bottom and completed it as one stitch. Now I will do one single crochet in the next three stitches. So this is going to be the repeat pattern for the round. I'll be following on the repeat pattern and around seven will have a total of 12 stitches. For round eight, the repeat pattern is single crochet two together or a single crochet decrease followed by one single crochet in the next four stitches. I'll be repeating this pattern one more time here. This round will have a total of 10 stitches. After completing the 10th stitch over here, I will join with a slip stitch in my next stitch. To do so, I will insert my hook in the next stitch, yarn over, bring a loop through the stitch and bring the same loop through the loop on the hook. So there we have joined with a slip stitch. Now we can finish it off. To finish it off, I'm going to leave a tail. I'll trim the yarn over here. Next, I will yarn over and pull through the loop on the hook all the way through and tighten this up. So there we have completed the candy portion of our drawstring coin purse. And this is how our project looks. So now let's crochet the wrapper portion over here. To do so, I'm taking a darker shade of blue over here and I will join this yarn with a slip stitch to any stitch of round eight. So to do so, I will insert my hook inside one of the stitch over here and I will hold the new yarn behind our project and I will yarn over and pull through the stitch. So we have a little loop on this side of our project. Now I will yarn over and pull through the loop on the hook. So there I have joined my yarn with a slip stitch. There are different joining methods as well. You can use your most preferred one. Now let's continue working on the pattern, which is round nine. To do this round, I will do chain one first. To do a chain, I'll yarn over, pull through the loop on the hook. This chain does not count as a stitch. Now I will do one single crochet in the same stitch. And I will do one single crochet in every stitch around. Round 9 will have a total of 10 single crochet. So once I, when we've completed the 10 single crochet, I'm going to join with a slip stitch on top of the first chain over here. To do so, I'll insert my hook inside the chain. I will yarn over, bring a loop through the chain and through the loop on the hook. So there we have completed round nine. Now let's work on round 10. For round 10, I will do chain one first. This again does not count as a stitch. Now I will do two single crochet. Followed by one single crochet in the next four stitches. This is going to be the repeat pattern for the round.
I'll repeat this pattern one more time over here. The repeat pattern is two single crochet in the next stitch. Followed by one single crochet in the next four stitches. And once when we do that, we can join with a slip stitch to the very first chain over here. So there we have completed round 10 and this round will have a total of 12 single crochet. Now let's work on the last round for the wrapper which is round 11. For this round I will do chain 2 and I will join with a slip stitch in the next stitch. So this is going to be the repeat pattern for the remaining stitches here. The pattern is chain 2, a slip stitch in the next stitch. I'll meet you after I complete the repeat pattern for all the stitches here. We would have finished the repeat pattern with a slip stitch here and then we can finish off over here. We can weave these tails in later. Now let's crochet the wrapper on the other side. To do so, I'm going to hold my project like this such that the round one is facing up and away from you and then I'm going to join my dark blue yarn with a slip stitch to any of these front loops of round two. So here we have a little loop here. I'm going to insert my hook inside the loop and I'm going to join my blue yarn. So for this entire round, we'll be working on the front loops remaining of round two over here. So the pattern for this round would be a chain one. This does not count as a stitch. I will do one single crochet in the same loop over here and one single crochet in the remaining stitches in the front loop only. So once when we have a total number of 10 stitches over here, I will join with a slip stitch on top of the first chain over here. Now we have two more rounds over here for rounds two and three on the wrapper. I'll be repeating the patterns around 10 and 11 for this wrapper. So the pattern for round two over here is chain one. This does not count as a stitch. I will do two single crochet in the next stitch followed by one single crochet in the next four stitches. I'll repeat this pattern one more time here. The repeat pattern is two single crochet, followed by one single crochet in the next four stitches. And once when we complete it, we can join with a slip stitch on top of the first chain. Now let's work on the last round for the wrapper, which is round three. For this round, the repeat pattern would be chain two, slip stitch in the next stitch. Chain two, slip stitch in the next stitch. I'll be repeating this pattern around. And I will meet you when I'm at the last stitch over here. Once when we complete the stitch we can finish off over here. So there we have crocheted our candy with a wrapper. One end is closed and the other end is open. It is in this end we'll be attaching the string. For the string, I'm using the darker shade of blue yarn here and you can either use the same hook or a smaller hook and then you can crochet some chains to do. So first I'll do a slip knot followed by chain 15 here. You can make your chains longer or shorter depending upon your preference. So before fastening it off, you can see whether it fits in your candy. So I'm going to put a pause over here and then I'm going to try to insert these strings in the loop 
over here around round eight of our project. So you can either use a yarn needle. I'm gonna insert around the stitches like this. So for me, 15 chains are more than enough. If you would like this to be longer, you can add more chains to this project. So this is the candy at the, at the open end. And when it is fully open, I have around four stitches on the outside. If you would like to use this as a loop without attaching a key ring, you can make this chains a little bit longer. So once when you fit it inside, you can join with a slip stitch. On the very first chain over here and then we can fasten it off there are different ways you can finish this end off you can either weave in the tails for this string and attach a key ring like this so you can hold on to your project like this and this is how it looks The other way to finish it off is to attach some fringes to this end. And here I've crocheted only 15 chains, so it's like this. For this, you can put it inside your backpack or such. And the other way to finish it off is to leave longer chains and to add a fringe to the end. So by this, you can insert your hand inside this drawstring. So this is when it is open. When we close it, we would get a slightly longer string. I will show you how to attach fringes to this end. To attach a fringe to this end of our string, I've taken three strands of yarn. This is about seven inches each and I'm going to fold the strands in half. Next, I'm going to take my hook. I've inserted inside a little stitch over here at the end. And I'm going to yarn over and pull through all three folded loops here. Now I'm going to hold all the strands over here including the two tails and I will yarn over and pull through the strands through the folded loops. Pull the tails to tighten this up. So there we have added fringes to the end of our drawstring. Now we can trim off the edges. So now I'll go ahead and weave in all the other tails and I will meet you once when I weave it in. The next step is to attach eyes to the project. I'm using these flat eyes over here. I'll be gluing it onto the project like this using a hot glue. You can either embroider eyes or you can use eyes like this. I'll be attaching one eyes between rounds four and five. And the other eye between rounds six and seven. And then we can embroider the mouth below that. So there we have crocheted the candy drawstring coin purse in the size small which is perfect for quarters. Please refer to my written instructions for the other sizes which includes a medium size for all your coins and a big size which includes all your cash and coins. I hope you enjoy crocheting this along with me. Please show your support by subscribing to my channel. Thank you for watching.